Justin Tucker missed this kick. There's no denying it. But him even being in this position and coming this close kind of makes the point this video is going to try to convince you of by itself. And if it doesn't, open your mind a little bit. Justin Tucker lined up to try and break the NFL record for the longest field goal outdoors and no one thought it was crazy. This wasn't Lane Kiffin sending Sebastian Janikowski out on a prayer. Pretty much everyone was okay with going for the first ever 67 yard field goal. And when he missed it, the only person Tucker blamed was himself. You know, the fact that we had a chance, I just didn't deliver. Uh, you know, it's heartbreaking to me, it's disappointing, especially when it's a kick that I know I have the ability to make. Nothing like, oh, the offense should have gotten me a little closer. Nothing but pure accountability. Under circumstances no human being at all has ever succeeded under. It is pretty commonly accepted that Tucker is the best kicker in football. They even placed him in the NFL's top 100 players before this season started, with some of his peers in the league advocating for him to be there. A kicker. In the same list as the guy with his own Fortnite skin. Yes, I spent $8 on that just for a joke like this. But I want to go one step further. I think Justin Tucker might be the single most underrated athlete on the planet right now. Normie football fans understand that he's a special kicker. I want to take his respect to the next level. He is such a good kicker for reasons greater than what usually gets articulated. And funny enough, because I mentioned Fortnite a minute ago, you know we gotta talk about that ninja tweet. But first, a word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by Manscaped. It's Christmas time, and Manscaped gifted me their Performance Package 4.0. Let's check it out. Manscaped created the world's first all-in-one men's grooming kit that has you covered from head to toe. The Lawnmower 4.0 is a waterproof cordless trimmer built with advanced skin safe technology, which helps reduce nicks and cuts on your most sensitive areas. Not really fun to, you know, get hurt down there. It also has this cool LED light that's good for visibility and battery awareness. Other stocking stuffers include the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. The liquid products do have a pretty good scent to them. New to the collection is the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer. Honestly, you have no idea how much you probably need this. Really glad the big guy hooked it up for me. The Weed Whacker has these 360 degree rotary blades and the same skin safe technology from the trimmer. So it helps prevent tugging and tears in your nose and ears. Every guy out there needs to add Manscaped to their wish list this season. Or if you have a special man in your life that's been extra good this year, make sure you get him the performance package by Manscaped. For a limited time, you'll also get two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. I'm fully aware that I kind of look like Mermaid Man here. I embraced it. That's a gift on top of a gift, which pretty much makes you the best gift giver ever. Don't wait. Go to manscaped.com and use promo code SRS to get 20% off plus free international shipping plus two free gifts. A sincere thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Back to the action. I'll never understand how college and NFL football teams allow kickers that just miss kicks. I feel like there has to be pools of kickers in the USA that won't miss simple kicks. Or snappers that won't mess the snaps IDK man it seems so silly. Would love opinions on this. So Ninja's tweet actually has a lot of meaning to how I want to start fleshing out this argument. The average football fan holds kickers to an extremely high standard. Misses of any kind are deemed completely unacceptable, at every level. Kickers, more so than a lot of other positions, are held to this robot-like standard. It's because this is basically their one job, and it's so disconnected from the rest of football. People just kinda expect that if it's their one job, they better be lights out at it. People really moved the goalposts on what kind of excellent standards they want from a kicker. It's even like that in the NFL. Doink it off the crossbar? Nope. Everyone memes you to death. Miss one kick and an extra point in your NFL debut? See ya. Adam Gase kicks you to the curb basically right after that. Miss the game-winning kick in the Super Bowl? Get a movie made where a fan attempts to murder you as revenge. Buffalo 66 fans stand up. Kickers have it rough. Except for when they decided to give one an MVP award? You don't see that very often. It's like Gene spitting some heat on Madverse City. 
Facts. <laughs> Colin Firth would have been the best. Colin oh Firth. Jim is on that pack. You can't even lie. He said Middle Earth? Colin Firth? Like, come on, that's fire. Well, more so than any other kicker in NFL history, Tucker does not miss. Starting in 2012, Tucker has a 90.9% success rate on field goals at the time of writing this. Last year, he led the NFL with a 94.6% success rate. That's not even the second best rate he's put up in a season so far. Extra points, as they should be, are even more of a gimme for Tucker. He's missed five extra points in 11 seasons. 98.8% success rate there. You know when Messi's really good at kicking sports balls, they let you play as him in Warzone, but nothing like that for Justin Tucker. Range is also not a problem for Tucker. He's missed just two kicks between 40 and 49 yards in the past three years, 11 in total for his whole career. So an average of once a year, he misses something from this range. From 50 plus, he has a career success rate of 72%. He's got almost a 3 out of 4 shot to make a 50 plus yard kick whenever he lines up. And that doesn't even account for 60 plus yarders like the one he tried in Jacksonville. He's made it from that distance before too. Here's one from 61 yards back on Monday Night Football in 2013 against the Lions. So he's also clutch. There's also that capability he's shown to drill it from 70 yards in warmups, but Justin will tell you that warmups don't matter. I disagree, I'll give him credit where credit is due there. He also currently leads the NFL in field goals made with 25. So he's dependable, and he's got a big foot. No one has been better at either of those things in NFL history. Tucker's also way better than the average kicker, and I'll prove that with a couple statistics. Please indulge me there, I actually did some math for this one. Nine kickers this year, not named Justin Tucker, have at least 10 field goal tries and a success rate of 90% or higher. Nine kickers. There are 32 teams in the NFL, mind you. Tucker has held that rate for his entire 11-year career. NFL average amongst those guys is a little over 85%, which he comfortably sits over both this season and in his career. And there's also a metric on pro football reference called Hall of Fame Monitor. It basically tries to quantify how successful everyone's careers have been as a way of seeing who should be a Hall of Famer. Side note, Jerry Rice absolutely torches the wide receivers in that. Tucker is sixth all-time for kickers. The rest of the top 10 averaged a career length of appearing in over 19 different seasons. And the five guys above him have averaged 21.8 seasons played. Tucker did all this in about half that time. 11 total seasons. He's already knocking on the door of dudes who played through like four or five US presidential tenures. Also, in the interest of full disclosure, Tucker is paid like the best kicker in football too. And the best opera singing kicker in football, who has also separately won a bag on that talent. Tucker's team, the Baltimore Ravens, have been a consistent winner during his time there. In fact, the year they won the Super Bowl with him as their kicker, he went 20 for 20 on kicks, extra points included, during the postseason. He makes the Ravens a better team when he's at his best. But not just like this. Let me break it down one step further. If you really think about it, Tucker makes every other facet of the Ravens better. He makes their defense better by giving them a chance to work with a bigger field. Under 63% of his kickoffs wind up as touchbacks, so the coverage team has a shot to pin opposing teams back a little further than a touchback would. He also takes the pressure off them in terms of yardage they can give up, because his range and dependability are just so good. Same thing with the offense. It goes without saying that he can score points for them, which is literally how offense is supposed to work. But he also takes a lot off the plate of the offense, especially late game. The distance the team has to drive down the stretch is shorter and less stressful because Tucker can score from a distance further than most. He contributes so much to the Ravens' ability to win games, especially close games. He has shown he can be what turns the Ravens from a talented group with a good coach into a team that seals the deal on wins. Bet you've never thought of a kicker like that before, huh? Everyone expects a lot from kickers. Tucker not only delivers, he does so in a way that makes his team that much more of a threat. Case in point example, week 14 of 2020. Ravens are in Cleveland, and the Browns tie the game on them with a touchdown with a couple ticks over a minute left in the game. When they get the ball back, they're able to stay calm, play the short game, live relatively risk-free, 
and then have Tucker line up for a successful 55-yarder to win the game. Because that's what he does, and the offense didn't need to take any risky shots down the field. Here's another one. Week 11 of 2015, Ravens are hosting the Rams. Their defense recovers a late fumble past midfield. Their quarterback throws a really stupid pass on first down. See, when you have the ultimate sure thing ready to kick you into a W, you basically don't have to do anything other than getting this fumble to lock down the win. So they just call two running plays, gain 12 yards, then Tucker just boots the game-winning 47-yarder. Because what else would he do? And one more for good measure. AFC Divisional Round 2012. Ravens at Broncos. After getting a clutch pick, all they do is run four rushing plays for a total of 16 yards, and let Tucker kick a game-winning 47-yard field goal in double overtime in the freezing cold, and they win the Super Bowl a few weeks later. His very presence demands less from those around him. You don't need the miracle deep shot to set Tucker up, and that's part of what makes him so special. I keep thinking about it, and I can really only come up with one comparison to this. And it's going to seem insane and a bit of a reach, but I promise I can make it make sense. The parallels are there between Justin Tucker and Jacob deGrom. As a starting pitcher, deGrom, at best, will only appear in one out of every five games his team plays. Absolute best case scenario, he's playing for about 20% of the total team play in the season. So his usage relative to how often the team is actually on the field is small, all things considered. As a kicker, Tucker has, let's call it limited field exposure as well. DeGrom is so much better than the next best pitcher when he's at his best. And DeGrom can't on his own win a game, but he can take the pressure off everyone around him and sometimes single-handedly keep the team in the game. It's not as apples to oranges as the best pitcher and the best kicker should be. Justin Tucker is just that good at kicking footballs. Sure, pitchers can control baseball games, but Justin Tucker pretty regularly becomes the make or break on if his team actually wins the game. So you may have known Justin Tucker was good coming into this video. I hope you can leave it with a better understanding of just how good he is and just how much he contributes to success. But every special athlete has a signature moment, and I've purposely saved Justin Tucker's for the end, tying everything we discussed together. September 26th, 2021. Ravens at Lions. It's 4th and 19 from deep in Raven territory. 26 seconds to go, no timeouts, down by 1. The Ravens do convert the 4th down play, and then frantically stop the clock, short of the predetermined line of field goal range on the TV broadcast. Tucker is forced to line up for a 66-yard field goal. This would be an NFL record, in the same building as the Miracle 61-yarder touched on earlier. Because Tucker has the leg that he does, the Ravens really just needed that one throw to get them this far and nothing else. Basically any other kicker is unable to be trusted to hit from this distance. That would mean taking the incredibly unlikely shot into the end zone as your only shot to win. But with Tucker, they can line up a win right here, right now. Can he do it again? What do you think happened? Man, um, I love Detroit. I'm thinking about getting a place here.